Right then, we are going to look at what a displacement reaction is in this video. Before you watch this video, what you need to know is what the reactivity series of metals is, what the reactivity series of metals tells us, and what a compound is. If you are not comfortable with any of those things, you need to go back and watch the videos for those before you watch this video, because otherwise following it will be quite tricky. In this video, we're going to learn the definition of a displacement reaction, how we can use the reactivity series to predict if a reaction will occur, and then we're going to be able to write word equations for displacement reactions. So, oh, what is a displacement reaction? A displacement reaction is when a more reactive element replaces a less reactive element in a compound. To predict if a displacement reaction will happen, we need to know the reactivity of the two elements involved, in this case metals, so we're just talking about metals in this module, of the two metals involved, and to be able to do that, we need our reactivity series. So, the reactivity series is just a list of metals where the most reactive is at the top and the least reactive is at the bottom. So here, potassium is the most reactive and as we go down, reactivity decreases all the way at the bottom till we get a gold, which is the least reactive. Now, as a quick check for yourself, there's a list here where there's two metals. So for example, the top one, gold or calcium. Can you pause the video and just using the reactivity series on the left there, pick the most reactive metal out of each pair there. Right, so most reactive metal is in red, so hopefully you picked those. Basically, the metal nearest to the top of the list is the most reactive. So out of gold or calcium, calcium is nearer the top than gold, so calcium is more reactive. Magnesium and zinc, magnesium is closer to the top, therefore is more reactive, and so on. Right, using this reactivity series to predict if a reaction will occur. To predict if a reaction will occur, we are going to use the reactivity series on the left and we are going to look at the metals involved. We are going to underline the least reactive and we are going to circle the most reactive metal. So if we take this as an example, copper oxide and sodium. Copper oxide is a compound. Sodium is just in the form of sodium metal. We are going to underline copper because copper is the furthest towards the bottom of the reactivity series compared to sodium and sodium is really high at the top. So we're going to underline copper because that is the least reactive out of these two and sodium is the most reactive so we're going to circle it. The most reactive element isn't in the compound so here it isn't. Sodium is just by itself. Then a displacement reaction will occur and the more reactive element will replace the least reactive element in the compound. So for this we will get copper oxide plus sodium gives us sodium oxide plus copper. So if you can see here sodium has replaced copper in the oxide. Two more examples. So if we look at zinc chloride with calcium, zinc chloride is a compound, calcium is just in the form of calcium metal. So we need to look at our reactivity series and compare the reactivity of zinc and calcium. And we're going to underline the least reactive and circle the most reactive. So between zinc and calcium, zinc is below calcium. We're going to underline zinc and we're going to circle calcium. So calcium is going to displace zinc and we're going to make calcium chloride and zinc metal. Next example, we're going to react sodium chloride with magnesium. So again, we're going to compare the reactivities of sodium and magnesium. We're going to underline the least reactive of the two and circle the most reactive. So here, sodium is higher towards the top of the list than magnesium. So we're going to circle sodium and underline magnesium. And in this case, no reaction will occur because the most reactive metal is already in the compound. So magnesium isn't reactive enough to displace sodium, so no reaction occurs. Right. Here, are, here is a list of five reactions. Could you write, please, full word equations for each of these reactions? If you don't think a reaction will occur, just write no reaction. So pause the video. Have a go. Right, there's your answers. So for sodium oxide and magnesium, there will be no reaction because sodium is more reactive than magnesium and sodium is already in the compound. Between lead oxide and potassium, 
we'll get lead oxide plus potassium gives potassium oxide plus lead because potassium is more reactive than lead, so we'll displace lead in the compound. For copper chloride and zinc, zinc is more reactive than copper, so we'll displace copper from copper chloride to get zinc chloride plus copper. Between aluminium, bromide, and magnesium, magnesium is more reactive than aluminium, so we'll get magnesium bromide plus aluminium. And then for the last one, potassium chloride plus copper, we will not get a reaction because copper is less reactive than potassium. Potassium is already in the salt, so copper is not reactive enough to, enough to displace it from its compound. Thank you very much.